AVS Media Channel. Papa Hotel Lima Echo November Radio Check. Papa Echo November, good afternoon, uh, read you five. Good afternoon, read you five as well, Papa Echo November. The Exxon Radio and TV show is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio and TV show or in any manner endorsed by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, Talkstar Radio Network, its affiliated stations, or employees. All-Hit Radio. Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Rob McConnell here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com on MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com, and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Cynthia Sue Larson. She is a best-selling author and spiritual life coach who helps people transform from accidental manifestors into conscious quantum jumpers and reality shifters. Hmm, sounds interesting. Cynthia has been featured in numerous TV and radio shows, including the History Channel and BBC. Cynthia's popular reality shifters easing that covers the subject of how consciousness changes the physical world can be subscribed to for free Exxon Nation at www.realityshifters.com. We're talking this hour about Cynthia's new book, Reality Shifters, When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. It, it has been enthusiastically endorsed by Edgar Mitchell, the former astronaut, Dr. Larry Dorsey, and Fred Allen Wolf. Joining me now from the beautiful state of California is Cynthia Sue Larson. And Cynthia, welcome back to the X Zone. Oh, thank you so much, Rob. It's such a pleasure to be on the show. Tell me, Cynthia, um, how did you get involved with the topic of quantum jumping and uh, parallel universe shifting? Oh, boy. Well, I've been noticing these amazing shifts in reality for the last. I guess um, uh, almost two decades now. When I first noticed it, I, I was, I, well, I don't. I should preface this whole thing by saying I don't do drugs. Okay. <laughs> so people know, like, okay, the stuff I'm about to explain and describe, it, it's not because I'm, I'm tripping on marijuana. I know I live in California, but I don't do that stuff. Glass of wine occasionally. But what I've noticed is some pretty amazing things, um, and I, I. I'll just say right out there, I've seen um, a dead cat alive again. I've seen buildings and structures such as um, a concrete sundial sculpture that's about 20 feet high show up out of nowhere Mm -hmm. that had never been um, in the location that it now is at the Berkeley Marina with witnesses who also had never seen it there before, but now it is there. And I've seen cars vanish out of thin air, just disappear. I've I've seen things appear just suddenly um, um, right in front of my eyes, um, like money um, in my wallet just showing up, dollar bill after dollar bill, um, a, a tooth that my daughter had lost at school um, just up here out of thin air when I was writing a note that she'd lost her tooth at school, and milk just appearing in the refrigerator making a thump sound 
as I'm just standing next to the refrigerator. So I'm, I'm describing some of these really far out things as kind of um, the, I guess, the bleeding edge of this phenomenon of reality shifting, quantum jumping. And then there are much more typical things that the, the listeners would say, oh, yes, that's happened to me, which would be just doing a load of laundry and noticing that there's that sock that's missing. Hmm. Or having that experience when you're about to leave the house and you you know, set your keys down, you can't find them. So yeah. that's how this whole thing started. I, I was observing these things, and I thought, surely somebody's written about this. Now, this is back in the late 1990s, and actually nobody had really written about it much. So that led me um, to explore this this phenomenon quite a bit, do a lot more research in the area. All right, now, you and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. I'm sorry for okay. cutting and interrupting here, my dear. Uh, Cynthia Larson's my uh, Cynthia Sue Larson's my very special guest, Exo Nation. This is going to be an interesting hour, I promise you. Her new book is entitled "Reality Shifts: When Consciousness Changes the Physical World." Her website is www.realityshifters.com. Cynthia Sue Larson and I will be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break. Don't go away. Which doctor's power and his ancient tribal ways cruelly collide with the force and authority of modern Africa? Africa is viewed through a myriad eyes. You will never forget these characters. A young girl forced to endure a painful, cruel, and antiquated tribal custom. The sole survivor of a vicious tribal massacre. A nun who endures physical assault that compels her to question her faith. A deprived, disadvantaged schoolgirl who is infected with HIV. The translucent soul of a murdered friend. Welcome to Africa's Unfinished Symphony. While the tale of South Africa in the wake of World War II is riveting, violent, and cruel, it is also brimming with stories of kindness, compassion, and courage. Africa's Unfinished Symphony highlights commanding characters who not only bring haunting racial clashes to life, but also convey the intense conflicts that existed between archaic customs and modern influences. You will be captivated as you follow the convoluted path of Farida of the ancients battling to become Bertha of a modern world. But are the outcomes of her struggle the best results for her and her beloved Africa? Africa's Unfinished Symphony will immerse you in historic African themes that will jolt you out of complacency and into compassion. For more information on how you can get your very own copy of Africa's Unfinished Symphony, visit www.luciaman.com. That's www.luciaman.com. Nation, Cynthia Sue Larson is my very special guest this hour. I've had the pleasure of talking to Cynthia times, time, here, now and then here on the x It's always great having her with us. Her new book is entitled Reality Shifts, When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. You know, over the, uh, over the break, I was just thinking about some of the coincidences or the incidents that, that have happened to me. Like you say, the keys are put down. You know you put them there, and they're not there. The salt and pepper shaker seem to have vanished. 
Uh, you know, and and I remember talking to people years ago about this, Cynthia, and they say, "Oh, that's that's the leprechaun. That's the little, that's the little fairies who do this." So now, are we getting a better understanding of what these events actually are, and they have nothing to do with fairies and leprechauns? Well, I actually like fairies and leprechauns, but <laughs> for those that don't really believe yeah. in those things and would like to find a solid scientific explanation, there is one. Um, in addition, and I don't think you need to let go of the belief in fairies and leprechauns. <laughs> I, 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 I love those. I so, love those guys. So do I. <laughs> so do I. You know, they're the little, they're the little happy things in life that make us smile in a world where there's so much doom and gloom and negativity. You know, just to think of the happy things that, you know, fairies and the childhood fairy tales that that entail them all that that have held us in the grip of the, their palms ever since we were going to. Uh, to elementary school and such. Pleasant memories of a childhood. So, so with, while keeping that, that joyful state of fairy, fairies and <laughs> leprechauns and yeah. um, all of that, I, I'd like to also add that for people that, that feel like, well, I don't believe in that stuff, or they want something more scientific, yay, there's good news. And that is that we can actually expect to see quantum behavior at the macroscopic scale, and that is what I'm proposing that we're witnessing. So, in other words, what Albert Einstein once referred to as spooky action at a distance, Mm -hmm. when referring to quantum entanglement and superposition of states and and quantum teleportation, all that strange stuff, where a so-called particle is actually oftentimes existing in the form of pure energy, and in a probabilistic state, so we don't even know exactly where the darn thing is, which leads to the situation of Schrodinger's cat. You know, is it alive? Is it dead? Is it in both states at the same time? Good question. And yes, the answer is yes. And not only that, but we currently have a majority of physicists currently, when they're surveyed and asked, what do you think is happening? Do you mm-hmm. think an actual cat could be in a super, uh, superimposed state? In other words, both alive and dead at the same time. Right now, more than two-thirds of physicists, when they're surveyed, say yes, everything, even at the macroscopic scale. In other words, something big enough that you can see it like a cat Mm -hmm. definitely is in a superimposed state, which explains that you could put your socks in the laundry, but they can be in a form of pure energy. So you take the laundry out, and there's a sock missing. Let, Let me ask you something here. What is what effect is this new quantum investigation going to have on our perception of life and death? That's a good question. I mean, because we're just talking about Schrodinger's cat here, and I'm talking about life and death. And and I mentioned this experience that I've had where yeah. I actually literally saw a cat, once again, <laughs> yes, a cat that had been dead, alive again. This has a huge effect on our concept of life and death. I'm just wondering if, if the... If the story in the Bible about Christ and Lazarus, Christ bringing the dead back to life, was had something to do with his ability to actually manipulate, not uh, manipulate the the quantum fields right. to actually right. bring a person back from the dead, and that quantum physics, quantum mechanics, quantum investigations are going to prove that many of the soul so called woo-woo beliefs were actually possible. Well, I'm a big believer in that. I, I'm a believer in the miracles in the Bible mm-hmm. that, you know, because when you look at it just as you're describing it right now, there is a lot of scientific validation for it. Uh, what's coming forward just in the last 12 months, this is pretty new, by the way, Rob, because yeah. um, if you're watching and following the news in science the last 12 months, you're going to be seeing what I'm talking about which is you'll see entangled diamonds that you can hold in your hand. Um, Not so much bringing back um, people that have died. Uh, That would be pretty advanced for the laboratory. Um, And I don't know when we're going to get to that point. But we're seeing so many things being proven in laboratory repeatable conditions where every single form of quantum behavior that had been considered previously, oh, that only happens at the quantum scale, not anymore. Mm. And it's it's big news. So yes, I would say um, definitely, absolutely, that's what Jesus was doing. Can you... He was able to get to that place where there's that superposition of states. Yeah, it's like pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Now Lazarus is alive. Exactly, yes. exactly. And there are so many, like you said, miracles in the in the Bible and other religious books as well. 
Let me ask you this. Can you help our listeners to better understand what quantum jumping is? Yes. Okay. That's, um, it's an interesting phrase, and I think maybe I should just start by saying, what is that? It's, now, there's a popular expression people have heard about quantum jump, and it actually literally has a meaning in physics, because to scientists, quantum jumps are tiny, discrete, indivisible, and abrupt. That's what it really means. So a quantum is something you can measure. Mm-hmm. It's in, you can't break it into different pieces. So it's just a very discrete element. And so the idea here is that quantum particles can exist at one energy level or another, but not in between. So when scientists talk about quantum particles making a quantum jump from one state to another, scientists have watched this happen, and what they see is there's actually a quantum particle that's there, and it blinks, it vanishes, it kind of blinks off, and then it blinks on again, and it's at the next level of energy. So now quantum jumping, this is a little bit different. This is a process. When we say that phrase, quantum jumping, we're talking about a person that can envision a desired result or some state of being that's very different from the existing situation. And by just bringing in enough energy, that person can make a leap into that alternate reality. So the idea here is that, well, we seldom consciously realize that we are living in a multiverse of parallel universes. Usually we don't notice all the other realities. There's no connection. But you can actually get a kind of a handshake through time and space from one reality to another. You can form a bridge, and someone experiencing a quantum jump literally ends up in another reality. And the connection is so total that you're literally walking into another place in time. And so to the universe or the multiverse, both of you still exist, but your awareness of who you are tends to coalesce on one reality. So you might have just a memory or like a vague sense that you were in the other Mm -hmm. reality. Or maybe you remember it pretty clearly, but you've definitely moved from one universe to another. Does this have anything to do with the recall of past life? That's a great question. And I think there is a definite connection there. Because when you think about past lives, then that's in a form, in a sense, it's it's another part of the space-time multiverse mm-hmm. continuum. So you can definitely access other possible yous, um, not so much just in this current space-time moment. We tend to think in terms of past lives like, oh, that's something that happened a long time ago. But what if all space and time is accessible in, you know, just this state of mind? You can go to a state of consciousness and access right. everything. So, yes definitely connected to that. Fascinating. Um, why do you find this topic so fascinating? Like, there, out of all the different topics in the world that you could have focused in on, why this topic? Well, I am an optimistic person, and so when I think about, I, I think for me personally, I, mm-hmm. I feel like although the world has so many problems and challenges and difficulties, uh, just based on my own experience of having seen these basically miraculous things, um, these reality shifts, quantum jumps occurring around us, then I know for sure that we don't ever need to get depressed and despondent, uh, that in things can change in just a moment. So no matter how terrible things may seem, we can get to a, a very, very wonderful place in the blink of an eye. You know? And so t- to me it seems like this is a... If it was a technology, if it was a course or a program that you could learn and study in school, this would be what I would want to major and would want to study. I'd I'd want to make sure that this was available to everybody Mm -hmm. because it it has the the capability to bring us to to a wonderful place like heaven on earth um, that's totally within our grasp. But it does require mindfulness. It requires that we gain a sense of knowing who we are. Is so it, it's not something you can just master um, in a moment or an evening. Mm-hmm. It, it does take a lot of meditation and working on yourself to get really good at it. Is it possible for a person unknowingly to to shift from one dimension to the next in a parallel dimension? And what seems to be reality as they know it is a totally different dimension and if so could this possibly explain a lot of the mental illness that's going on 
Wow, that's a great question. And definitely it's possible. In fact, I think most people, that's their introduction to these quantum jumps and reality shifts, is that they have no idea what's going on. They've just got, they've gotten to that very energized state. Maybe they're feeling a lot of angst. Um, you've heard of people whose computers can just blow up and yep. they have... Yeah, they walk in a room and the light goes out or things, equipment malfunctions around them. You know, that's, that's a person who's very psychokinetic. They've, they've just um, definitely, they're a very good candidate for experiencing other worlds. And these are the kind of people that can literally walk into another reality and just feel like everything has gone wrong. They don't recognize people. It's just like everything's a bit nuts. And, and yes, they yeah. can totally um, feel like they're crazy. All right, you and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. We'll be back. But I must tell you, my wife is has a must to be using this because she can make money just disappear. <laughs> I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with my very special guest, Cynthia Sue Larson. She's the author of a new book that's out, Reality Shifts, When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. Her website is www dot reality shifters dot com now if we could only get laura to make money up here instead of disappear we'll have to work on that don't go away exonation You're listening to the X-Zone Radio Show, live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network. X-Zone Broadcast Network. UK High Definition Radio. Euro High Definition Radio. And Star Cable. Our toll-free telephone number worldwide is 1-800-610-7035. Our email address, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www. Dot Exxon Radio TV dot com. I believe it's meant to be, darling. I watch you win. I'm not here for you. I can let you go. Nation, my special guest this hour is a good friend of the Exxon. Cynthia Sue Larson is her name. She is a best selling author and spiritual life coach. She has a brand new book out entitled Reality Shifts When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. Her website is www.realityshifters.com. That's www.realityshifters.com. You know, I've got to tell you something here, Cynthia. I was talking earlier today to a quote and unquote doctor, uh, who a uh, gentleman who claims to have had or has a degree in physics, a PhD. You make more sense than he does. What was he saying? <laughs> it's interesting when you say he claims to. Well, yeah, we found out late during the interview, because I kind of put him up against a wall, that he received his doctorate from a correspondence school. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. But you make total sense. Well, thank you. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, um, what scientific explanations and theories are there to help explain, you know, jumps or reality shifts? Okay, well, there are, okay, the best way to get to that point is to look for interpretations um, of what's going on with quantum physics. And so there are four leading theories that I personally think are the top contenders that make the most sense to me. Um, one is the one that people tend to, most physicists agree with, and that's the Copenhagen interpretation. 
And this one is the one you might have heard of where there's an observer effect and there's basically, um, it, it requires that you've got someone observing the quantum particle mm -hmm. and it, it uh, let's see, if you're looking at the double slit experiment, trying to think, find a way to explain all this simply, um, most people probably have heard of the double slit experiment and, and if you haven't heard of it, it involves firing something like um, a beam of photons, which are quantum particles, and firing them at a couple of slits and looking at a screen behind the two slits to see what might appear to be a diffraction pattern. And the way to explain that would be when you've got waves that go through a couple of slits, it's like water that goes through waves and you can see ripples. Mm -hmm. um, you can sort of imagine that if you're sending water towards a, a barrier and it's got a couple of holes in it, then the waves come out in a diffraction pattern or it, it um, creates... It's a very interesting little pattern on the other side. So well, the thing about um, the interpretations of quantum physics is that the first one, this Copenhagen interpretation, was it came uh, into being by Niels Bohr back in Italy in 1927, and his suggestion was um, that these quantum particles actually exist as waves, and that's why we see a diffraction pattern. Um, kind of explaining this really fast. I think this looks best if you look at a picture of it, and it's hard to do that on a radio show. But if you can just kind of imagine that you're firing this beam of photons, which is light, through these two slits, um, and if you put a little measurement device at one of the slits to see if you can actually discern whether any particles are going through there, if you have a particle detector there, you actually will detect particles. And when that's happening, this is what's really weird. You're still going to see the diffraction pattern appearing as if waves were happening, it, it, which is very odd. Um, so the, it's like the particles go through and hit, but when you send enough particles through, you'll see that same diffraction pattern on that screen behind the two slits. So that's the Copenhagen interpretation is one of the four theories to explain what's going on. Another one I mentioned earlier is the parallel universes, the multiverse. Mm -hmm. This theory was called many worlds interpretation. It was it came into being by Hugh Everett III back in the 1950s. Um, a third theory is called transactional interpretation. I mentioned a handshake earlier between um, this would be between one point in time and space and another. This is the theory of John Kramer. This is a physicist who still is alive, working up in Seattle, Washington. And he's doing some experiments right now to see if he can fire a photon and detect it before he actually sends it. The fourth theory is a holographic interpretation. And that was David Bohm's idea. And it, um, also neurophysiologist Carl Prebrom. And the two of them both thought that the whole universe could be conceived of as a giant hologram. And like on Star Trek with the holodeck, um, you could actually have matter and consciousness as one single field, and it's um, the objective world is kind of out there in a vast ocean of waves and frequencies that we think is solid because our brains convert that enfolded hologram into an unfolded sense of material. That, so it's kind of like it's all illusion, but it's also real. So those are the theories that I personally prefer. There are lots more theories. We don't actually know for sure which if of these is the right one. Um, but I, I feel like there's so much evidence of the many worlds, so much evidence of this handshake between the past and the future. Mm -hmm. um, th th that's why I love those particular theories. Tell me, can a person consciously become a a time traveler or a quantum jumper? Yes. In fact, many of people are doing that who are listening right now might, might not even realize that you have been doing it. But I believe that everybody who uses any kind of affirmation mm -hmm. or visualization method, and are, if you're seeing success from that, um, also placebos for that matter, all of these things, I, I think the success of all these different programs can be attributed to quantum jumping. And when you think about it, um, mo most of the top athletes are using visualization. They, they imagine perfect performance. And this is what the top Olympic coaches are doing with athletes. They get them relaxed. They get them energized. 
and then they visualize that you, that they are doing their very best performance. And this has been scientifically proven in laboratories to be as good, if not better, than actually doing you know that practice in real life just well, to be imagining it. Well, was it wouldn't that be the same as a parent who instead of giving positive encouragement to their child says you're dumb, you'll never amount to anything. Is isn't this basically the same thing? You mean um to to visualize something good instead of something Right, if bad? if a chi- if a child receives positive um accolades or positive encouragement from the parent and the parent says someday you're going to grow up to be someone special you're going to be a doctor or you know or whatever the case and then you've got the other parent and unfortunately there are so many like this who say you know what you're dumb you'll never amount to anything you know you're right. just going to be on welfare for the rest of your life that is so true. Yeah. If you read the biographies of famous people like Chuck Norris, he wrote an autobiography. He actually describes that yeah. his mother had told him from early childhood that you are going to be amazing. You're going to make a big difference. And he really believed that. And you're exactly right, Rob. This makes a huge difference. And people, it, it's like they can tune into that, that frequency, tune into that yeah. reality. And it, it captivates their imagination. It's it's just like if you're riding a bicycle or a motorcycle. Whatever you focus your attention on, that's where you're going to go. You see, so the what, people that make that mistake when they're riding a motorcycle, mm-hmm. they're looking down, they hit the pothole, and they fall off. Exactly. And you can't do that. you got to no. keep your eyes up, look at the horizon, focus on where you really want to go. See, I, I when I was young and as I was growing up, I was always called a dreamer. And you see, to me, the only difference between a dream and reality was making it happen. The dream was my idea, and the reality I saw in my mind, I focused in on it. And everything that I've ever wanted to achieve in life, I have succeeded to achieve. Right. Because that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, that's it. So you are a good visualizer. And what I'm saying is that you get, it's, it's really this process of several steps. You know, first getting into that very relaxed Mm -hmm. state. And this is the same thing those Olympic coaches do with athletes. You know, they don't just jump into the visualization. No, the first step is you need to get meditative. And that's what, when you said daydream, perfect. That's exactly it. You you get into that state of, of that dreamy state of uh, just daydreaming, being relaxed, being just energized and in a very, um, it's, it's like between gears, between reality, state of mind. You know what I'm talking about. I when you're daydreaming, do. anything is do. possible. That's right. And it's like you can just go to wherever the reality calls you and beckons that feels the most energizing, the most enjoyable. And then taking that one step further, if I may, when we dream, now I can have a dream within a dream within a dream, and I know I'm dreaming. To find out if I'm dreaming, I walk and I try and find something that I should be able to read, like a newspaper or a store sign. And if I can't read it, I know I'm dreaming. And then I create my own little reality within that dream, like I have my own little hollow deck going on. That's right. So what, how, what importance does a dream play when it comes to quantum jumping or, or shifting? Well, dreaming is really important, and it's. I think when we talk about dreaming, there's so much to it. It's that could be a whole program sure. in itself. <laughs> so, to summarize that, I think the key is um, we're talking about daydreaming, and I think most people relate to that feeling where you just let your mind wander. And but I, I'm talking. I'm relaxed. talking. I'm talking. But about that, what night you're time getting dream. into with the lucid dreaming, that's pretty advanced, and then the dream within a dream within a yeah. dream, very advanced. Um, so a lot of people might not be able to go all the way there. But I know everybody that's listening can definitely get to that daydream state. Everybody knows. Like if you're just doodling, you know, just scribbling on a piece of paper, doing something relaxing. Mm-hmm. Often when they do things, if you do things with your hands, it's relaxing. Um, people often don't realize they're meditating just by doing simple things like that. But that's the key. And um, when, <laughs> what was your question again? I'm trying to simplify oh, I, I, it. I was just yeah. asking if there was a connection between dreaming at night we were talking about daydreaming, but I was talking right. about the the dreams we have during our, our nighttime rest period that the body needs in order to regenerate as well as to do some processing, get rid of... See, I, I look at dreaming as the, the way the mind does defragging. 
you know. It, That's it, partly true. Yeah. I believe often we get elements of deja vu, and you know that there's a connection between yeah. lucid dreaming, deja vu, out of body experience. These things connect on a very deep level and I believe that's part of why we we, we need the dreaming not just for the defrag but also yeah. I'm pretty sure we're accessing this multiverse in the dreams and getting a lot of practice on that this hollow deck of you know quantum jumping reality shifting reality so even if we don't know what we're doing we're, we're doing a lot of run throughs of things and so then when we often experience it later that's when we had we realized oh my gosh I've had a future memory of this this is yeah. deja vu you know, I'm walking through something. I've done this before. And we did. We had a, a dream experience where you can actually access everything. Hmm. Fascinating, uh, fascinating topic. One of the most uh, surprising types of reality shifts that you talk about is the alive again variety. Tell me more about that. This is very interesting. And um, I, I've got a website, Reality Shifters, that we mentioned. And over the years, Lots of people have written in to me, um, to the newsletter, and mm -hmm. posted stories about how they've noticed that um, people have been alive again. So I did a survey through the website and, and just to find out what kind of people are being noticed alive again. Because often I've heard like many people would mention Captain Kangaroo, the actor that played him, Bob Bob Kirsten, yeah. Yeah. Now, 26% of the people that wrote in said they remember that he had passed away. But then they saw him alive again. So he was, I think, the number one person that came up. The top um, four would be Jane Goodall, Larry Hagman, Bob Hope. Actually, let's include Jack Palance. He's another one. And I don't know what it is about these certain individuals, but um, you know, maybe there's just some certain realities. What, what about the Elvis sightings that people report every that's year? That's another big one, probably. Yeah. You know, because um, I, I don't know what to make of that. Now, would um, this also include? Um religious um, sightings of, let's say, the Virgin Mary or or other religious um, persons? I, I, personally, I would I would include them in this as well. Yeah. I, I think that, um, and, and when you get, this is very interesting, because some people um, believe in, uh, you know, having seen certain spiritual figures walking around on the earth. And yeah. I'm trying to think offhand, um if there have been any recent sightings. You know, Elvis is kind of funny and entertaining. <laughs> but but then when you think of St. Germain, um, you know, people have seen him through the centuries. Mm -hmm. And Mother um, Mary, like you're mentioning, yes. that's that's a big one. And just Jesus walking out of the tomb, you know, being alive again. I, I think these things are definitely real. They they do happen. And it's, it, it's something that may not happen all the time, but... When you, when you just realize that we're living in a multiverse and you can move from one reality to another, then why wouldn't we occasionally get to a reality where somebody that had died is back again? Cynthia, stand by, dear. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exo Nation, Cynthia Sue Larson is my guest this hour. Her website is www.realityshifters.com. The name of her new book is Reality Shifts, When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. My name is Rob McConnell, Cynthia Sue Larson, and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is what it meant to be. Don't tear us apart. I'm right here for you. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From out of the woodwork, will take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com.
Welcome back, XO Nation, by the way. The music that we use at our intros and uh, going to breaks are from our new CD. It's entitled The Music of the XO, and it's available at Amazon.com. Cynthia Sue Larson is our special guest this hour. And uh, if you go to www.xzonedirectory.com, you can find out all the information about Cynthia Sue. If you have a story that you'd like to share with her, we have all her links there. And after listening to her for this hour, you now know why she's part of the Exxon Directory of Who's Who. First of all, Cynthia, as always, great having you with us. Time flies by so fast when you're with us. It's got. Speaking about that, here's a serious question. Does the quantum shifting and reality shifting have anything to do with sometimes the amount of time either taking so long and being dragged out to other times when it just flies right by? Absolutely. In fact, I've seen time slow to a stop a couple of times, and and you're right. Other times it just goes so fast. Yeah. That's another kind of reality shift that is a very common one where people are just driving on the freeway and they go way farther, much faster than is humanly possible, and they weren't breaking any speed laws or anything like that. Would you happen so to know if any of the astronauts have experienced a uh, quantum shifts or reality shifting or any any time space continuum deviation from what is known as the norm i am absolutely certain that edgar mitchell has he's a great guy man oh he's fabulous he He founded the institute of noetic sciences and conducted some experiments when he was out in space had the pleasure of talking to him a few times and that he is uh, just a stellar gentleman oh he's wonderful so I am sure that most of them have. Um, Edgar definitely admits to it and yeah. talks about it, um, and he's written about it as well. So The Way of the Explorer is his wonderful book, which I don't know if he spoke about it when he was on the show. Is that That's going back about, to what, 10, yeah, 12 years? Back yeah, a while. So What would you like to, you know, I I hate to do this, but the time is, is running so fast. It, in fact, it's going at quantum pace here when I'm, talking to you here on the show. We've got about a minute left. What 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 would you like to leave the Exo Nation with until the next time you're with us talking about dreams? Oh, wow. I'd like to ask people to pay more attention because we're talking about, uh, in fact, we're talking about time slowing down, stopping, or speeding up. Mm-hmm. 86% of the people that I've surveyed through the Reality Shifter site said that is something they've noticed. And So for people listening, just think to yourself, what have you noticed that has shifted in your life, and what would you like to shift next? And think about that. And I love the question, how good can it get? So, you know, sometimes these things sound spooky, but it doesn't have to be scary. You can just think in terms of what would the good shifts be in your life. You know, and and I, I agree so wholeheartedly with those people who have noticed an, an increase in the speed of time. And, it, it, you know, how do we explain it? How do we explain that time is just flying by on a continuous basis that we don't have any more time to smell the roses? Well, I think that it means we're so involved. Ironically, when you slow things down and slow, like slow food movement mm-hmm. and just slow your thoughts down, you can actually feel like you've got more time. It's very strange. Well, I wish we had more time tonight, my dear friend, but we've <laughs> run out of time. I will, Cynthia. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to the next time you join us to talk about dreams. Me too. You thank take you care much. of yourself. Continued success. Exo Nation, Cynthia Sue Larson has been my very special guest. If you'd like to find out more about Cynthia, go to her website at realityshifters.com or go to her um, her listing at the exonedirectory.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. With the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away.